Okay, so I'm sat here in Poe's Gym, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, just finished my workout, thought I'd do a quick wrap up now whilst I'm sat here. Um, Josh, who's the general manager, welcomed me in, really nice guy, showed me the ropes, and then Matt Poe, who owns the gym, turned up part way through. Um, also an incredible guy, a big, big presser, um, loves overhead work, does some exhibition lifts and things like that, and if those that know me know that anything floor to overhead is sort of what I really enjoy training at and seem to do fairly well in, so I um, so took some advice, tips and inspiration from him, he's very big on the old school strongman stuff and old school strength feats, so some cool stories and, uh, and good conversation. Um, the workout in itself, if I'm honest, didn't go amazingly well. Log press, not very good. Front squat, that went okay. Uh, first time ever using chains. Um, there'll be some commentary in the video in a moment so you'll know exactly what I did and what I didn't do. Um, and then did some pressing accessories guided by um, what Matt had advised me to try. Um, so I'm gonna cut through to a little tour of the gym now and then a quick chat with Matt. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy. Let me know your thoughts, feedback, comments, criticism, and um, next video coming soon. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be quick. Just zipping around the gym. That's the entrance right there. Um, quick loop around so you can see exactly what's going on. Not a huge space, but it's got everything you need. A big old heavy set of dumbbells, loads of racks, um, loads of squat cages, racks, bars. Um, majority of the accessory equipment's all lower body, uh, which is pretty cool. Shows it's a big powerlifting focus. Every single bar you could imagine from different powerlifting and weightlifting bars to specialty bars. Um, it's got the strongman memorabilia wall with all sorts of notable strongmen and Olympic lifters and powerlifters that Matt has encountered throughout his time. Um, then the platform here is uh, what's gonna be filmed for an ESPN special where Matt does an exhibition lift. Now we're gonna quickly cut to the video and hope you guys enjoy. Right, okay, um, as mentioned earlier, I'm sat here with Matt Poe. Uh, Matt owns and runs this place. Um, He's really well known for his overhead work, does some exhibition lifts and things like that. Those of you who know me know anything floor to overhead I really love. We seem to have a similar <laughs> philosophy of like, um, it's such a primal thing lifting a heavy weight from the ground to overhead and that's what's attractive to me and I think the same for you Matt. Right, right? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, um, I'm just wanting to get a little bit of advice um, from Matt through me and to you about um, how to build a bigger overhead. Um, so Matt, if you'd be kind to let us know sort of your top two or three exercises that you sure. suggest. Hey Lewis, first of all, thank you for uh, visiting the gym. I'm always humble and honored, especially for people out of the country. Um, I definitely have a, uh, a love for the overhead, uh, particularly the push press. And I've worked with a lot of Olympic lifters and a lot of those guys hate the push press because uh, you have to finish with your arms and you can't jump under it. But it's very beneficial for Olympic lifters uh, uh, with their jerks uh, in the long run. But I would suggest this. If you're going to do any overhead, definitely get some dumbbell work in. And I would suggest knee work. Get a pad or not a pad. Get on your knees. Do some alternating dumbbell presses. And you can sit back you know, on the back of your calves or you can be straight up. Okay, and the advantage of being straight up is, is that you can develop your posterior, anterior, you're getting a lot of core work, you're getting rectal work, uh, you're definitely getting some rhomboid yeah. work too, which is very important. Uh, if you don't have strong abs, you cannot even come close to optimizing your overhead capabilities. And you don't have to be ripped up like a world-class bodybuilder, but you've got to have that neuromuscular firing pattern in those abs to stay stable. So. That would be a great benefit to be on your knees and stay straight up. More core there. But if you start out seated on the back of your calves and shoot your hips through to the straight up position, you're gonna get great work in hip extension because when you do the overhead press, I'll leave you with this, the push press, because that's my technique that I love to teach, is that you have to get on the balls of your feet mm -hmm. as you explode, okay? You have to get what you call ankle extension, okay? Then your knees are gonna extend then your hips are going to extend with the horizontal force. And when they meet the vertical force of being on the balls of your feet, they meet right here. That's when all that force goes up into the air and enables you to finish quickly with the upper body. And as you get on the balls of the feet, about the time that bar is about mid nose, your heels are hitting and you're finishing with your arms. So just to leave you with this, if you're doing any kind of explosive push pressing, you have to extend or you have to extend the ankles, which puts you on the balls of your feet, okay, as powerfully as you can in a straight up position. 
you have to shoot the hips, extend the hips, okay? You don't want to extend too powerfully, you're getting a hyperextension. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave them behind or that bar is going to get out in front of you. That's so it's right. no different than a golf or baseball swing. You've got to have perfect timing. Then you finish with speed with upper body. So you got to have some strong triceps as well. Perfect. Well, thanks for your advice, Matt. Um, Thank you, Lewis. I um, definitely put some of the kneeling yeah. presses into practice yeah. today. Uh, very humbling, lightweight, <laughs> um, but it was nice to really feel the core, glutes, yeah. hams, everything, feeling tight and um, activated instead of just throwing away. Well, everything. and on that subject, you can, you know, on those, on these sets, say you have a set of, you know, five to seven, or let's mm -hmm. just pick six. Yep. The first three could be in a erect position. Yep. The second three could be where you shoot your hips, where you're sitting back yep. on your calves. Now, as far as the weight, you can accumulate speed with lighter weight, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe on your first set, next set, go with the heavier weight. Yep. So you're just keeping the neuromuscular firing patterns refined to an explosive environment. Yep. So you accumulate speed, you use it. Accumulate speed, you use it with a heavier weight. So. Perfect. Well, thanks for hosting me here today. You got um, it, man. You got it. I'm a little bit annoyed that my log session didn't go quite to plan, but nonetheless, I've got some knowledge from yourself. It was a pleasure to me. Well, and you. Um, yeah, hopefully the people watching will find the tips useful as well. Thank and, you. Um, yeah. And any day to overhead press is a great day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Okay, so right here we've got 110 kilos. Um, I mean, it's a decent weight for me I, as a 90 kilo lifter, um, but I am moving up a weight class, so I need to be getting better. Um, it just didn't feel very good. Um, I'm struggling. You can see I'm sort of falling off to the side a bit. My foot's rubbing on the mat. Um, my right hand leg, though, the one on the left, looks pretty jacked. That's, I suppose that's a positive. Um, but yeah, it just didn't feel that good. And then I think I put like 20 pounds extra on, or maybe 15 pounds extra on. It was somewhere like 115 kilos, 118 kilos, something like that. And bearing in mind I did like 115 for a triple the other day. Just look, it's just pathetic. I just kept, just no. And you can see how annoyed I am as I walk off. So uh, I was just getting dizzy on every warm up set, never mind those sets. Uh, it just wasn't good, I was, it wasn't there. So I dropped it down to 90 kilos um, and just wanted to, to press 10 off the chest. First few reps start firing up quite nicely, getting a nice rhythm going, and then all of a sudden it just slows down. I have to steady myself and grind through the reps a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna keep quiet on the commentary box and just watch and shake my head in disbelief at how bad this log session was. I mean, <laughs> I say bad, it, it's still okay numbers, but it's just not where I wanna be, especially when I'm trying to like get a bit stronger, put on a bit of weight, put on a bit of size. Um, I get through them, I get the 10 done, but yeah. Um, we're not two reps, I'm just trying to pass away the time. <laughs> Look at our grind, I mean, that's not good. I think I even shook my head there. <laughs> uh, anyway, front squats. So I've never really, I've never used change in, in squats anyway, I don't think, or very rarely. So here is 130-ish kilos, like 132 kilos. The chains apparently are 45 kilos each. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, obviously in the hole it might only put 10 kilos on, but nonetheless hit a double, banged it up to 140 or 315, so 142, 143. Um, a third of the chains were on the floor. So as I said in the video, there's probably about 30 kilos in the air right there and about 15 there. So it's a decent lift, I'm quite happy with that and then dropped it down to just two plates, so 102 kilos, 225 pounds, um, and banged out 10. So it's in real time here, so you get to see sort of the speed, the feel of it. So we're looking at about 115 out of the bottom, 130 at the top. Um, to push 10 reps at that, and as you can see, it's not that bad. I mean, my face is purple and I'm, I'm grimacing, but if you've seen a lot of my videos, you do know that whether it's a warm up or a max set, my face looks like I'm in excruciating amounts of pain all the time. So um, that's not really an indicator of level of effort, it's just the ugly old face that I tend to pull. Um, but yeah, I'm liking these. I'm liking sort of in my training, dropping it down as the last set and grinding out between eight and 12 reps. Um, anyway, this is what Matt was talking about, um, some kneeling presses, um, really light, 
Um, it, it, it actually felt hard. This is 55 pounds. This is 25 kilos per hand. It's nothing really. But um, I'm focusing on keeping my core, so my abs and my glutes really, really tight. And then after I've got a few, just firing my glutes forward and nothing else, just to help with the push press. Um, it's quite cool. I'm going to throw it in there and just see what, what works. I've never really done it before, so we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, the whole experience at Matt's gym was, was really good. As you can see, there wasn't really anyone around. It was middle of the day. I'm sort of enjoying training when it's quite quiet at these gyms because I get free run, get to roam around my camera. Um, you see a British guy turn up or you see a foreign person in any gym turn up who's rocking some stupid leggings, walking around with a camera in his hand. And I'm not, it's not a phone, it's a real camera filming basic workouts like kneeling dumbbell presses and other silly things you're gonna probably judge him um, so when there's no one there it's just i uh, just get to do my thing um matt's a great guy as i say he's he, he's push press overhead is his his baby it's also my baby I, I i love doing that sort of work um so it was cool just to chat about all things strength related all things overhead related really welcoming guy and i headed downtown in nashville and had a tour around the johnny cash museum which was was pretty cool um Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, a little bit of a different format to the others. Um, let me know your thoughts, feedback, comments and criticism and I'll catch you guys up in the next one. Thank you.